Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, it's Christmas time, so I thought I would uh, do a more festive uh, nutritional talk today. Uh, I thought I would talk uh, about sprouts. Um, many people have sprouts with their, uh, their Christmas dinner. A lot of people don't actually like sprouts and don't eat the sprouts they cook. Um, but they are interesting nutritionally. So um, what is it about sprouts uh, that makes them uh, of importance in human health? Um, well, sprouts are a good source of vitamin C. Uh, they also contain uh, high amounts of vitamin K, uh, and they do contain small amounts of the B vitamins as well. Uh, there's obviously fiber there because they are uh, a plant food. Um, but really, uh, the interesting uh, thing about sprouts is the phytochemicals that they contain. Um, sprouts uh, contain a chemical uh, or group of chemicals called the glucosinolates. Uh, and these are of interest to um, uh, nutritionists at the moment because they, they appear to have uh, anti-cancer effects in humans. Now, it's not the glucosinolates themselves uh, that are uh, the cause of this effect. Uh, the glucosinolates have to be converted into another group of chemicals uh, called isothiocyanates. Uh, and this conversion uh, requires an enzyme called myrosinase and this enzyme uh, is normally compartmentalized within the cells away from the glucosinolates uh, and when we chew or cook the sprouts um, these compartments are broken open the, the myrosinase is released into the cell it comes into contact with the glucosinolates uh, and it, uh, it cleaves bonds within the glucosinolates to form uh, isothiocyanates. Now isothiocyanates uh, are bioavailable in humans, that means when we eat the sprouts we absorb the isothiocyanates um, and they appear to have uh, anti-cancer effects. Uh, in particular, uh, they've been researched uh, it, it, with respect to their effects on the phase 1 and phase 2 detoxification enzyme systems. Now normally when a, a chemical uh, is taken into the body, um, it, it might pass through the phase one detoxification system. Um, sometimes this causes the chemical to become more carcinogenic uh, than it was originally. Um, so the phase one detoxification system is actually an activating step uh, whereby some chemicals are, are actually uh, produced that are pro-carcinogenic. Uh, however, that doesn't normally matter because uh, the chemical will be acted on immediately by phase 2 detoxification enzymes, uh, which then usually make it more water soluble so it can be excreted. Um, however, uh, if you have uh, too many uh, of these chemicals in your body, they can overwhelm uh, the, the, the phase 2 detoxification system and they uh, what happens is they tend to these pro carcinogenic uh, chemicals that have been through the phase one detoxification enzymes uh, they build up in the body and this can be a cause uh, of the initiation of, of cancer now isothiocyanates are interesting because they inhibit uh, phase one detoxification and that means that they only very slowly trickle uh, these chemicals through uh, the enzymes and therefore uh, it, there is not time for them to build up in tissues and therefore this reduces the amount of the um, procarcinogenic uh, chemicals that could be produced. In addition, the isothiocyanates may also speed up the phase 2 detoxification enzymes. So that also will reduce the amount of these procarcinogenic chemicals uh, in the cells. Uh, so working in this way by inhibiting the phase 1 detoxification and, and accelerating the phase 2 detoxification pathways, isothiocyanates actually reduce the amount, uh, the exposure of our cells uh, to these pro, uh, these activated procarcinogenic molecules that can be formed uh, as part of our detoxification. Uh, and that's one of the ways that um, isothiocyanates have been uh, researched um, and one of the possible mechanisms by which they, they may decrease cancer rates. Uh, there are uh, other theories as well. They may increase apoptosis of cancer cells, for example. They may have antioxidant effects. Um, so there are uh, numerous uh, avenues of, of research going on to see how they, uh, they do have these anti-cancer effects. But it is known that these isothiocyanates are bioavailable in humans and they do appear to have uh, anti-cancer effects. So eating sprouts is a good idea because they contain these chemicals. Now, as I said earlier, a lot of people don't like sprouts. Um, a lot of people will avoid sprouts and even if they're present uh, on the table at Christmas Day, uh, they won't be consumed. Uh, but there is good news because um, 
Sprouts are a member uh, of the Brassica family um, and the Brassica family contains other vegetables uh, which some people might, uh, may find preferable to sprouts. Um, for example, uh, uh, broccoli uh, is a uh, Brassica family vegetable. Uh, there is a cauliflower, a cabbage, um, watercress as well. Um, and these other vegetables also contain glucosinolates. Um, so uh, there are a range of different glucosinolates. There are about 15 uh, that have been found to be important in human nutrition, although there are hundreds that are actually known. Only about 15 are found uh, in the foods that we eat. Uh, and they all tend to have uh, similar effects in the body. Uh, and they can be found in a range of uh, brassica family uh, vegetables. Uh, now the brassica family vegetables, uh, another name for them is the cruciferous vegetables. So if you don't like sprouts uh, and you want to get the benefits uh, of, the, uh, of the beneficial isothiocyanates that they can uh, produce, you can look uh, at broccoli, cauliflower, uh, cabbage, uh, watercress. There are a range of, uh, of these other uh, uh, vegetables within this family, and they all have these glucosinolates in them. Now, um, the way the thing that bring uh, the, the common uh, thing that you find uh, in these vegetables, which is why a lot of people don't like uh, eating them, uh, is that they're actually quite bitter. Uh, children, in particular, are very sensitive to this bitter taste in these vegetables, which is why uh, they tend to be uh, very repulsive to children. Uh, and it is the glucosinolates or, or the production of these isothiocyanates that actually uh, may give them their bitter taste. However, um, because uh, obviously researchers understand uh, that people don't like this taste, uh, they have actually been bred to reduce uh, the amount of uh, uh, the bitterness that they contain. Uh, now, you would have thought that this would reduce their anti-cancer effects because it was assumed that the bitterness came from these isothiocyanate compounds. However, the uh, the low bitter uh, v uh, variants of these uh, of these brassica family uh, vegetables do still appear to retain their anti-cancer effects. So it's not a clear cut picture how these isothiocyanates are working, and it's not entirely understood um, how these uh, vegetables are uh, anti-cancer uh, in their effects. Uh, but uh, it, it ha they are well researched epidemiological studies show that those people that eat more of them have lower rates of cancer uh, cell culture studies and animal studies have been done um, to show that they do have uh, anti-cancer effects in cells uh, and so human studies have been done to show that they are absorbed uh, and they do appear to affect uh, enzyme detoxification so if you don't like sprouts uh, they're on the table uh, have a look at the broccoli and the cauliflower uh, instead uh, there's cabbage as well uh, and enjoy your crucifix vegetables because uh, they're the only uh, vegetables that do contain these glucosinates uh, and they have some very unique uh, nutritional properties which make them uh, they should be incorporated as part of a high quality diet uh, and they make them very valuable uh, in human nutrition.